guys, uh, this is a, a brief video to show you how I use the capital asset pricing model to get an estimated uh, discount rate uh, for whatever purposes, but this is the estimated discount rate for equity um, for a publicly traded firm. I have done that for Disney. Uh, you can see in the slide here that I've gone through the capital asset pricing model um, states that the return required return to equity, which could also be the discount rate for equity, is equal to the risk-free return plus the beta of the comp company times the return on the market minus the risk-free return. And so we need to go get values to put in there. I'm going to just show you kind of where I get those values and we're going to go from there. So let's start with the uh, risk-free rate. Um, generally, if you ask most um, um, experts, they will tell you to use a U.S. Treasury rate. So U.S. Treasury yield. Um, let's just go yield curve. Uh, the Treasury Department publishes that regularly. There's tables that you can go look at. Um, that's it visibly. And we could go look now. We want the five-year rate, um, which is 1.90%. Uh, the, the rationale behind that is a bit complex at this point, but basically you want something that's not short-term, but not super long-term, maybe reflects kind of the average holding period for a stock in the market. And so typically we use somewhere around the five-year rate for that. So that's 1.9% and that's where I get that from. The company's beta, um, there's a whole process in CAPM where you could calculate that beta. Um, it requires a lot of assumptions and um, conversions and so forth that we'll talk about later. But you can also go to Yahoo and simply um, get a beta. And so let's do Yahoo Finance. Uh, it helps if I can type. So there we go, and we're doing this for Disney, so I'll put in DIS, and hit the search. Uh, it's a little bit slow here, but it brings up to Walt Disney Company, and you can see that it lists a beta of 1.44, um, so I'm just going to put that in right here. Historical return on the market's a little bit of a trickier thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you, for, again, using Yahoo Finance, kind of how I got to that. Um, but that's going to require me to, I don't know why that keeps rolling, sorry guys. Um, that's going to require me to drag over another sheet here real quick. Um, the gotcha with historical returns and, and so forth, it's really supposed to be forward-looking returns. Um, but uh, nobody knows what the forward-looking return on the market is. And most people would say that a rational investor would say that the long-term return in the future would probably be similar to the long-term return in the past. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the S&P 500. We're going to get what its value is currently. We're going to get what its value was 10 years ago. And we're simply going to supply, um, su solve for what growth rate would make that make sense. And so simply put, um, if we were to take the value 10 years ago and grow it each year at some growth rate, and we'll, we put whatever in here for now, let's just say that, then if we have the right growth rate, we'll wind up at the end of 10 years with today's value. And that's, that's sort of the simple, easy way of doing this um, intuitive way. So again, we can go back to um, Yahoo Finance. Let's go get the S&P 500, um, and let's go out to the 10-year, kind of go back here, see what its value was. At that time, it was about 1,400. So that's where I got this value in here of about 1,400. Um, you can see right now it's showing at 2274. It was 2260 when I did this. Um, I'm, I'm fine with adjusting that. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. Okay. So those are just keyed in. 
implied annual return, you just put a number in to start with, 5%, 10%. doesn't really matter what you put in. Let's just put in 10%. Here's the real rub on this. So the implied value now is a formula, B3. B3 is what the value was 10 years ago times 1 plus whatever the growth rate is raised to the 10th power. So we've compounded this for 10 years. And if it were 10%, it would come up to that. Well, 3,600 is quite a bit higher than the S&P is right now. So I'm going to calculate the difference between what it is right now and what the implied is. And then we're going to use a little thing in, goal, in Excel called Goal Seek. And we're going to set this difference. So we're going to set the cell with that to zero by changing the implied annual return, which is our growth rate, if you will, our return. On, so that would be the annual return on the S&P. It's going to solve till it gets it to zero. Okay. It's going to say that's 4.97%. So um, it's a little bit more than that. You can see up in here, but basically that's 4.79% or 97%. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make this 4.97. There we go. Um, and then using all of that, you simply plug it into the cap M um, to get your result. So I'm going to go back over to my spreadsheet that I created. And I already have that in there, actually. Um, so again, risk-free rate. I used the five-year treasury real yield that we looked at before. Disney's beta, 1.44. Um, um, I already have the uh, market return in here. So formula is risk-free rate, which is B10, plus beta times the market return, 4.97, minus the risk-free rate, 1.90. That yields 6.32. Now that's a little bit different than what I had before. So I'll change that. Uh, and that's basically how we uh, use the available information in the cap M to get a discount rate. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that's pretty much all I got for that, guys.